everyone! So we are back in volume two of our new series on our channel called Rainbow Breeze. Yes. <laughs> um, so you will have seen last month that we did a video recommending books solely on the color of the cover, which was red last month. Yep. We've moved on in the rainbow. <laughs> in this video, we're doing orange covers. <laughs> we're really sticking to it. And also, we're going in order. <laughs> it's, hot, it's also Halloween, so I wanted to do orange books. I <gasps> hadn't even crossed my mind. How, so, how very appropriate. I uh, that might have been my main reason and then Karina pointed out that I'm also going in order of the colors of the rainbow so yeah everybody wins <laughs> <laughs> all right so I think we each have five yep uh yeah four and one I haven't actually read which okay. I want to read so. sounds good yeah so let's just dive in crystal yeah. you're up first Alrighty. so um I kind of have a theme going here uh, my first choice is black hammer secret origins a graphic novel by Jeff Lemire um, this one I just read recently, and it's kind of the story of golden age superheroes who are now stranded on this farm cool. and they can't leave. Um, wiped out of their superhero universe by a multiversal crisis, the forgotten heroes of Spiral City now live as a dysfunctional family on a mysterious farm in a small town from which they have no escape. Huh. So awesome. the first graphic kind of visits every character and how they got their powers and how they came to like be connected but i still don't know how what caused them to end up on this farm right. so the second graphic is sitting by my bed and i hope to uh burn through that one soon but this was a lot of fun very unexpected um my boyfriend had it and read it and he said mm -hmm. it was good so i just picked it up and started reading and well for the most part because it was orange and i'm like <laughs> so i need part. some more orange yeah. things but uh it was a nice surprise and I really liked have it. Have you read other Jeff Lemire? I have not, but they've been on my TBR for mm -hmm. a very long time. Um, or I may have a read He has one. Sweet Tooth. I know he has tons of different graphic yes. novels, but Sweet, his graphic novel series Sweet Tooth is awesome. Yes, that's And it's very that. much like the road slash The Walking Dead kind of Ooh. mixed together. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. really excellent series as well. He's a Definitely. great comic artist and Canadian. Yes, very Canadian. <laughs> I think I've started reading Essex County, mm. but um, Sweet Tooth has been on my list for, for a while. It's a very yeah. good one. <laughs> nice. All right. Sally? First one on my list is this very small little edition <laughs> of Calvin and Hobbes um, that I found at one of our little local bookstores. I've never seen them in this size before, no. and I was so happy. It's like a real little pocket size guy. Um, I grew up loving Calvin Hobbes and then like rereading them as an adult being like, oh, there's all kinds of like <laughs> philosophy <Right>. in this. <laughs> um, I just think that they are so legitimately like laugh out loud mm -hmm. funny and sweet. And I, uh, I encourage you all to read Calvin and Hobbes if you haven't already. I haven't read very much of it, so I need to, yeah. I need to explore it a bit more. This is Calvin and Hobbes number two. So I guess it's like very early mm -hmm. in the, in Bill Watterson's, um, Career. It's from 1988, so I'm happy to lend this to you if you'd like a pocket-sized <laughs> one. They're also one of my favorite Halloween duos. Working in the toy store, people would want to buy a mm. tiger so they could be Calvin oh, and Hobbes for great. Halloween. That's I smart. was like, this is amazing. Very intelligent. <laughs> That's what my nephew should be for Halloween. Oh, I'm going to yeah, suggest that. <laughs> um, so my first one is another childhood favorite. Actually, that's not true. I didn't read it till I was an adult. Okay. But Pretty much everybody else I knew read it in school growing up. <laughs> and that is The Giver by Lois Lowry. Nice. Um, my favorite book as a young child was Number of the Stars mm -hmm. by Lois Lowry, which is very different than this one. Mm -hmm. That's a historical fiction. But I read this a few years ago, kind of just commuting, and I get it. I get it. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is a really wonderful little story. It's obviously disturbing. I'm sure most people know what this one's about. I don't. Um, but this is about a 12-year-old boy named Jonas, and him and his family and their community kind of live in this, what they think is a utopia. Mm -hmm. So everybody's exactly the same. <laughs> there's no color. There's no differentiations. Um, and then he is tasked with becoming the receiver, which is the keeper of memories. So that if something comes up within this community where they need to rely on history, he's the one person who will know oh, what okay. happened. Um, so he can he starts seeing colors and like so oh, right and it's just it was just really fascinating and so well done and obviously written for kids but reading it in my mid-20s i still was like this is written so well this yeah. is such a fascinating story um i will say i don't 
really care to read the quartet. I know it's four books long. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's four books. Huh. And so I think I think they're companions. Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but this was just awesome. And I know most people have probably read this already, but I was one of the few who hadn't. And if you were like me, I still encourage you to pick it up. I okay. have to. Me I too. have never read it. It was gifted to me uh, years ago from mm -hmm. a friend, but I think it's still sitting on my shelf. It may have been donated. It's a very fast but... read. And it was just... I mean, not that orange, but it is orange, if you can't see that. <laughs> um, yeah, just, I get why this is a signed reading. And not in like a, ugh, a signed reading. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was number one for me. Nice. Good pick. My second pick is more superheroes. <laughs> and that's Batman and Robin, Batman Reborn by Grant Morrison. Um, this is the first graphic that takes place after Batman R.I.P. I don't want to get too nerdy. I don't want to go bananas. Get nerdy! But Batman <laughs> is dead. So, um, Dick Grayson, who is the first Robin that we know and who is now Nightwing, takes up the mantle of Batman and is working with our latest incarnation of Robin, Damian Wayne. Batman's assassin-raised son who has come <laughs> into his life. <laughs> so Damien is a massive loose cannon. He's one of my favorite Robins, but we'll get to my favorite Robin later. <laughs> and uh, he's just hes just an annoying, bratty kid raised mm -hmm. by assassins who just thinks he can do anything. He will do things by any means necessary, <laughs> where Dick Grayson is trying to uphold the like, proper thing. So right. there's clashing here, but they're the new duo for the time being while okay. Batman is presumed dead. Um, but I really liked a lot of Grant Morrison's runs mm -hmm. in the Batman world and uh, I was a big fan, so. Very orange. Yeah, very, very <laughs> orange. You know, Batman's just a story, I mean, we've just discussed this before, that I've never explored. I've yeah. never seen the and movies. One just, summer. None of them? Wow. That's not so. a single. I don't think so. That's not a, that I can that's remember. A lot wow. Yeah. Uh, a, few summers, <laughs> a few summers ago, I wanted to read one story, but in order to do so, I needed the history. Right. So the amount of Batman I read in one summer <laughs> will blow your mind. <laughs> like, I don't even want to get into it, but like, there are sections that I, I really enjoy. Okay. But so if you want a place to jump in, I'd have to really think about where to direct you. I think I'd be more but. open to jumping into like a comic than at this point, jumping into the cinematic universe. Just right. Because I, and I just like reading better, so it's just not my thing. Yeah. So maybe this is how I should explore yeah. Batman. I'll hook you up with Batman R.I.P. He could die, and then you can okay. move on. I didn't see. I didn't even know Batman dies. <laughs> they always Spoiler die. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Batman R.I.P. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, okay. On that note, Sally, what's your second book? Um, my second book is one that I just finished last week, um, and it doesn't actually come out until next year in February, but that is Watch Hollow by Gregory Finero. Um, it is a middle grade book, uh, so it's about um, uh, alternating point of views between a brother and a sister. Their mother had passed away within the last year or so, and so it's just um, them and their dad. Their dad is a, um, a clockwork, okay. clock worker. Uh, I know that there is a technical name for that, I'm completely <laughs> blanking on that. Um, but. Uh, this man comes to their shop with a proposal for them that there's this clock at Watch Hollow that like um, actually powers the whole house, but it's uh, broken and n nobody has been able to figure out how to fix it. So they move there for the summer to this like mysterious mm -hmm. mansion, sort of buried in the middle of this creepy wood. Interesting. Um, and. Uh, there's some like enchanted stuff and some magic stuff and some seriously creepy stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, I uh, I really enjoyed it. It's a great cover. It's yeah. a fantastic I love cover. The cover. Um, it sounds creepy. I kind of want to yeah. read it. Well, I'm done with it. I can give it to you now. Sweet. Um, but that's really it cool. was it was a really interesting story and it was yeah I I, I like what he did with it so. Spooky Add that middle to grade. TBR. Totally. Thanks. <laughs> right on. <laughs> now, I feel like this list would be incomplete without this next one. And that is The Martian by Andy Weir, one of the orangest books yeah. that you will ever see. <laughs> was orange the color that we had to choose last year for Spookathon? It might have been. I think it was. I think it was. I remember the because videos this is what you, you guys said. Did. Yeah. yeah. And then I never read it. So. <laughs> um, so I haven't seen the movie, but I read the book. And 
I know there, I think there are some like mixed opinions on this one because I think a lot of people, from what I've heard from people, um, they find that it's too much science. Oh, okay. Whereas I thought, I loved reading about the science and because our main character, Mark Watney, if you didn't know, is on it's the near future-ish and he gets stranded on an expedition to Mars. His fellow astronauts assume he has died and he has not. So they leave him. <laughs> <laughs> so they leave him on Mars and he um, figures out how to survive or tries to. And it's he is such a funny character and like the situation <laughs> which is terrifying and like dire like it will be I don't remember how many years until the next person would be able to come to Mars but it's many years right and he's just alone so <laughs> and he figures it out and like goes it goes into all of the science and I just love Mark Watney he's just like I I'm having a hard time articulating <laughs> because he's in this like crazy situation that is very apparently crazy and mm -hmm. is scary but he's still like super humorous and like, right. okay, well, here we are, here we go. Like, <laughs> like, and he just figures it out. And it just, I loved it. I totally understand why it's so popular. Is it written like him writing himself journals or like talking to like space control or how? Yeah, so like, he, does, he does like okay. entry logs talking, I don't know, to himself. It's been a while. But yeah, he like makes logs okay. and like mm -hmm. is talking, being funny and like talking okay. to <laughs> things. So yeah, it's a. Uh, wonderful book if you like science at all it's super like give it a go because i'm not like terribly scientific um you know i did high school science but i didn't <laughs> go to college or anything and i didn't have any problems with this okay so it is so it's accessible. not like intimidating no not to me jargon. i didn't find it yeah cool see on the opposite i've seen the movie mm -hmm. and i loved it and i would love to read the book and i do love science mm -hmm. so i should probably pick it up yeah but... i tried to watch the movie because i like to watch adaptations of books I have read, and I could, I didn't think it was as funny. Okay, oh, interesting. So, maybe it's a Matt Damon. Fan. Yeah, I mean, I like a good Matt Damon. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing against Matt Damon. <laughs> All right, Crystal. All right. Um, my our, our last dive into Batman. I promise. <laughs> so again, following Batman, R.I.P. is Red Robin, Collision, and this is the story of. The Robin before Damien comes along and usurps Tim Drake, and he is my favorite Robin. Like, let's talk like teenage fictional crush, it would be <laughs> Tim Drake. And so this is him. Since the apparent death of the Dark Knight, Tim Drake has been consumed with the idea that Bruce Wayne is still alive, but where and when remains a mystery. Forming a, an alliance with Ra's al Ghul provides Red Robin with invaluable resources in his quest, being associated with the world's most notorious terrorists has serious consequences. So he kind of goes dark, mm. and he is joined a few times by some of the Teen Titans, which is where Red Robin goes to be. So um, Stephanie Brown is in here, who was once a Robin herself and is now that woman, that girl, sorry. And uh, Superboy's in it, but it's pretty much his journey coping with Batman going missing and trying to get to the bottom of it. And in my Summer of Batman, <laughs> I read the regular Robin comics because I was like, I don't know where Tim Drake came from. Mm -hmm. You know, Dick Grayson came from the circus and like Jason Todd was in there somewhere killed by the Joker. But I was like, I don't know who he is. So I went way back and started at Robin number one mm -hmm. and he's just... He's like this great teenage Robin, like YA fans, <laughs> go read Robin. It's, <laughs> you will love him. He goes to boarding school and he's got friends. It's awesome. So is that Robin the one that was like in the George Clooney movie with Chris? Nope. That used to be Chris O'Donnell, Chris who O'Donnell was still you. Dick Grayson. He was the original because his parents died in, in the circus and in he was brought in by Bruce Wayne. Got it. Yeah. There's been... Okay. At least six Robins I could name huh. now. Right. But currently, no it's <laughs> badass little Damien, and originally it was Dick Grayson. Gotcha. gotcha. There's been stuff in between. <laughs> so much. I, I won't don't get know. into it. <laughs> <laughs> I know the name Dick Grayson. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think this is one you're going to have to justify, yeah. Sally. I'm okay. I'm going to hear this. Face. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if it, if I didn't get to choose this one for for orange, I'm it, like it wouldn't also it also wouldn't be yellow, and I no, don't think we're true. gonna do like a flesh tone. Flesh tone. <laughs> yeah. So my next pick is Good, Calypso by David Sedaris. Um, it's like a 
yeah, okay, it's like an orangey birch. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give it to you. We'll give it to you. <laughs> so this is David Sedaris' uh, most recent collection of personal essays. Um, I listened to it and I'm now reading it. Um, and I absolutely love it. I would say that like, if you've never read any David Sedaris uh, essays before, I would always recommend starting with um, kind of from the beginning because they do, you don't at all need to read them in chronological order, but um, like his earliest couple of books are more about like his childhood and, right. and like right. his uh, younger years. So you kind of get to know his whole family throughout the books. And if you just jump straight into this one, like you're just missing a lot of the back history about mm -hmm. his family and sense. his relationships. Um, but uh, this is definitely one of his most personal, I would say. And it's like just as funny and just as weird as all of his others. But there's um, a lot of like really heartbreaking right. stuff about like family and just aging and, and all kinds of stuff in this one as well. But I, I just, he's my favorite. Like, hands down, he's my favorite. I just, I just love him. There you go. Cool. Okay, so next up is one that I'm not gonna lie, I read several years ago. Okay. So I needed to do a little bit of reading okay. for this one. Um, but it's one that when somebody asks me, what's your favorite contemporary story? This book always comes to mind. Okay. And that is Jellicoe Road by Melina Marchetta. This is Osway, so she's an Australian author. Okay. Melina Marchetta is probably best known for her books Looking for Ali Brandy and The Finnegan of the Rocks series okay but this is about a girl named taylor and she goes to a boarding school called the jellicoe school um and they kind of have this turf war going on with these cadets that visit every year and they kind of live in the woods and do like cadet training and they have like a, a t townies versus cadets <laughs> okay it's like kind of turf war happening and um, near the beginning of this book taylor's mentor i guess you would call her she doesn't have her parents aren't in the picture um, Hannah, who lives at the school, goes missing, um. and with no explanation. And the only evidence of the of Hannah that Taylor has is she finds this old manuscript, and this manuscript kind of leads her on this adventure to kind of figure out what happened to Hannah. So it's like a story within a story, um, and the, the manuscript's about five teenagers going to Jellicoe School years before, and it's just. It's like hints of magic in there, kind of, and it's just such a beautiful, beautiful story of just kind of Taylor trying to find her family, and there's a there's a nice romance in here, and I just I need to reread it for sure yeah. because I read it probably six or seven years ago, and I just fell in love, and I think it's super underrated. I don't I somebody recommended it, this to me on Tumblr, so that's how long it's been. <laughs> <laughs> <On> Tumblr. <laughs> so when and, and I just. I need to reread it. I think I might reread it this month because I just, it's such a beautiful story and nobody able to, and it won the Prince Award. Oh, cool. Yeah, which is pretty high honor. So, <laughs> so it, has, it has a few different things happening there. So I was like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, next up. Next up I have uh, Amulet Firelight. So this is book seven in the Amulet series, um, which I love. There's, I don't even know how to explain it sometimes, but um, Emily and her brother go into another world where there's elves and like talking rabbits who fly planes and he's my favorite. Um, so in book seven, they're off. Emily and Tre I'm just going to do this. Emily, Trellis, and Vigo visit Algos Island where they can access and enter lost memories. They're hoping to uncover the events of Trellis's mysterious childhood, knowledge they can use against the Elf King. And he's kind of the big bad mm -hmm. in the series. So I read this last year, um, and when we were in Seattle, I found a signed copy at the bookstore. Oh, cool. So that was a nice little find. And I think I need to give it a quick once over reread because book eight just came out, which mm -hmm. Corey has read, but I haven't had a chance to pick up yet. But I love the artwork, I love the story yeah. and the characters. There's robots and elves. Yeah, it's and... like a really nice mix of fantasy and yeah. sci fi. Mm -hmm. Like there is some like there's spaceships and robots and steampunk kind of things. Yeah. And, but also elves. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I'm sure both of us highly recommend it um, if you haven't read it. I've only Give read the first shot. one. I really oh. need to get on the rest of the series. I thought I volume eight one. was going to be the last one. It's not. 
Good so to know. there'll be at least one more as far as okay. I'm as far as I'm aware. Because I just read volume eight. And it's they're just they're just gorgeous. They're so yeah, pretty. they're really they're stunning. Gorgeous. I had had my eye on them for the longest time just because they're so pretty, and I just happened to be at a used bookstore mm -hmm. in like the west end of Vancouver, and they were all half price. Mm -hmm. and I was like first Lewis. four. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Right on. What you got there, Sal? So the last one on my list that I have actually read is Ooh. the Soft Atlas of Amsterdam. Mm, that's cool. Um. I did an exchange semester in Amsterdam a few years ago, and so I lived there for six months, and just like, I love it so much. Um, and this is, uh, it's like, it's like an atlas of the city as told through somebody's like personal perspective. So it's not like all the sights and sounds necessarily, it's like the inside of their friend's apartments and things oh, like nice. that. Um, and I, what is this one? Uh, this is a, a delivery room at our Our Lady Hospital. We've got uh, a, a barber shop. We've got um, so neat. Yeah, I'm trying to find here. This is the inside of a houseboat, and then just like everything's <laughs> meticulously yeah. labeled. But it's not like you know, it's it's his personal one. So it's like. <laughs> Uh, a friend gets seasick whenever she visits. <laughs> uh, she doesn't notice anymore unless she drinks too much wine. So like, that's very specific to right. this experience. Right. And I just think that it's so neat. Um, <laughs> and... Shopping malls feel suburban. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does, yes. Um, so yeah, I think it's it's the kind of city that like people are like, oh, Amsterdam is like yeah. so <laughs> crazy, the red light district and like drugs and stuff. But it's like, unless you're like, a a British lad who like <laughs> goes there for the weekend and like that's the only part you mm -hmm. see like there's so much to the I've city. I've heard so many wonderful things about Amsterdam. It's so beautiful and it's so strange and it's like just you, you gotta go you gotta go and this is by Jen uh, Rothhusen so well, probably Jan not Jan. Mm -hmm. but probably. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's really neat. I love it's cool like, little things like that. Yeah. Very cool. There you go, check that one out. Um, all right, so I have another contemporary story, and I read this one, oh gosh. Recently. Recently, it might have been early, it was either earlier this year or late last year. Okay. Um, and that is The Boy in the Black Suit by Jason Reynolds. Um, this is about a boy named Matt, who his mother has recently passed away, and he has started wearing this black suit all the time, and he ends up getting a job at a funeral home and starts kind of attending funerals, attending services, and it's like kind of like a catharsis, almost. Um, and then he also meets this girl who has been through so many more, like, things that are worse, even more, worse in her own life. Like, his life has obviously had tragedy, but hers is even worse, and she somehow manages to be this, like, strong and, you know, very caring and well-adjusted person. And he, like, kind of takes inspiration from her. Um, and I just, it was just a great, a great story about this boy. Quite heartbreaking, of course, as you would think, but uh, I just, it kind of explores, there's a romance in here, but it also explores friendship and family and community, and it's just, I really liked it. Jason Reynolds is just a brilliant writer. Yeah. I, I I've still only own. read Long Way Down, but I, yeah, I'd like to read at least one more by the end of the year. Maybe that will be that one. Mm -hmm. I was uh, watching The Great American Read, which is a TV show on PBS, oh, yeah. <laughs> and Jason Reynolds was on it. Cool. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> He's such a rock star. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> he does. He looks like an absolute rock star. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. He 100%. Yeah. <laughs> I remember him walking past us on the street when we were waiting in line at um, Yall, Yall Fest. Fest, and we were just like, <gasps> what? He <laughs> just yeah. got this, like, glow it's true. around him as like, he walks down. Starstrucky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So one more each. One more. Um, so I'm going to be honest. While I was at the library the other day, I was like, I need to find another orange graphic novel because <laughs> I kind of wanted to stick to this theme. Right. Um, and I just happened to pick up The Eternal Smile. Um, this is by Jean Luen Yang and Derek Kirk Kim. Um, it looks a bit yellow. We were arguing about this in my house. But, you know, it, it kind of blends into a color. lot of orange. Yeah. So uh, I'm going with it. <laughs> if and I can get away with Calypso, you can get away with it. <laughs> amazingly pleasant surprise oh. to read. I read it yesterday and it's broken into three different stories. 
Um, the first story is kind of like a fantasy. There's a princess and his name is Duncan. Uh, Duncan, charming and brave, he's the princess's favorite and he's on his way to winning the throne. But lately the walls of reality in Duncan's kingdoms are wearing a little thin. So mm. things aren't exactly how they you think they are. And the next story is this story about an extremely greedy frog named <laughs> Grandpa Greenback. And his main objective in his greedy little amoral life is to have a, a pit full of gold, kind of like <laughs> Uncle Scrooge, that he can dive into without hitting his head on the bottom. It needs to be deep enough and full enough that, that he won't hit his head. <laughs> So he, one day, this mysterious smile shows up in the sky, <laughs> and he starts a religion around it, and he builds a church, and he just starts taking people's money. But in the end, there's events that happen. I don't want to spoil it, but he learns something and kind of grows, and it's actually kind of beautiful in the end, despite how, like, mm. wow it was <laughs> reading it. And the last story, um, they're all in different, like, art styles, yeah, too, cool. so they're really cool. And the last story will be best if I read the flap because um, meet Janet. Her nine to five takes a turn, turn for the romantic when she learns in an email from a mysterious Nigerian prince that she has been chosen to liberate his family's vast fortune. All he needs is her banking information. So she goes in and starts having this little back and forth with this Nigerian prince and gives him all her money. And <laughs> she has this boss who's kind of a jerk, but it all works out well in the end. <laughs> In, in a happy way, yet I'm also like, you're out all this money. <laughs> but I found each little story, no matter how different and weird, had this like moral lesson mm. where you're just like, this isn't, it didn't end how it started. Right. And I feel better. Yeah. Like it's, it was a very pleasant surprise. Have you read American Born Chinese? I have not. Mm. You will like but that yeah. one too, I think. Yeah. I think I yeah. might have to... Uh, keep reading because yeah. yeah it was just and I want to read more graphic novels mm -hmm. I picked up one a couple weeks ago and since then I'm like oh, I just want to read comics again yeah it's fun. so very fun yeah cool mm -hmm. I hadn't heard of that one yeah. I uh yeah I will thanks Vancouver Public Library <laughs> yeah um my last one is one that's been staring down at me on my bookshelf for ages and I um it looks so cool again it's kind of red than orange but i'm gonna call it orange <laughs> blood orange blood orange that's right <laughs> that is charlie hernandez and the league of shadows by ryan Kelleho. um this is another middle grade it comes out uh in october of this year um so basically our main character charlie has like grown up listening to all these um stories of mythology um like latino hispanic mythology from his grandmother um and she so sometimes she'd draw pictures of the monsters from the tales for him to identify. Charlie thought it was all a game, but he should have known better. Charlie's abuela hated party games. So then an event happens um, and uh, sort of his family is like turned upside down. And then on top of that, he starts to grow horns and then oh. feathers <laughs> and... Feathers? <laughs> Maybe this mythology sounds, is not so right. mythological after all. It just sounds really, really cool. Um, and the, the cover's yeah, amazing. Very like there's, cool. I love, it's sort of like, uh, it looked, when I first saw this, I was like, oh, it's like the upside down. Um, <laughs> got the spooky guys down here and then sort of, kids. anyways, it, it sounds amazing. So cool. I have to read that one nice. as soon as I can. Now this one is a, a deep dive into my love of Brandon Sanderson. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've, I'm, I have definitely talked about this before, but the book that got me into Brandon Sanderson is Steelheart, right. which is a young adult science fiction trilogy, which isn't Brandon Sanderson's normal thing. <laughs> okay. um, pick up the paperback. And then the second book I read was Firefight, which is the sequel to Steelheart. And Steelheart is in, set in a science fiction world where the the superheroes, instead of being heroes, are decided they're gonna like run the place. Right. <laughs> so they turned it's set in New Chicago instead of Chicago. <laughs> so these books follow a group of characters called the Reckoners, and their goal is to take down these superheroes um, from controlling the world. Um, I just fell in love with the series. The uh, main character, David, is quite silly and he is like obsessed with really bad metaphors like he's constantly <laughs> making really bad like metaphors and similes that are just like other characters like what are you what? <laughs> and like he has to like explain what he's trying to do with his <laughs> metaphor and so 
Well, I think this one has a fun story with it because the first one of the first authors I ever met was Brandon Sanderson. Right. Right after I started reading his books, I had only read these two. And the only book I brought with me to the signing was this one. <laughs> and so Randy Sanderson signed this to me and it, he put in one of the bad metaphors. And I don't remember what the metaphor stands for, but it's, it says for Corey, like a potato in a minefield, <laughs> which is, a, is a, met, a metaphor that uh, the, the king character David had to explain himself with in this book. Oh, <laughs> he made that metaphor in here. <laughs> so, and I was just really, really scared. There's a really terrible photo of me with Randy Sanderson being like, <laughs> <laughs> and so I just and it's very orange and I just love this trilogy it really it started off a whole new love of a whole new author for me so cool that was great <laughs> <laughs> all right so that was orange books orange I really thought that orange would be hard mm. uh and clearly I did stretch it a little bit but <laughs> yeah I just love this challenge yeah, it's <laughs> really fun. I'm yeah. like I find myself like dreaming of upcoming mm -hmm. colors yeah. and I'm like mm, what books do I like that are what green mm -hmm. yellow. yeah yeah it is fun to kind of scan through your library mm -hmm. and, yeah and revisit some favorites or find new ones and, and yes yeah. exactly like yeah it's, it's such a great idea Glory. <laughs> oh thanks <laughs> um so we're gonna continue on with this series soon yeah hopefully at least once one of these a month yes. for the foreseeable future anyways yes. Um, yeah, if you like this, please give a thumbs up. Recommend your favorite orange books yeah, down yes, below. Please. We'd love to add more to our repertoire. So if you like this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. Happy reading and thanks for being awesome. Bye! Bye.